Hey guys, Helping Hands here bringing you your first build or for the Vermark faction in Company Heroes 3. Let's begin. So as Vermark, what I would tend to do is probably go straight into Luftwaffe. Confirm that. Instantly pick the Fulshamiga Pioneer. And straight away, what I would do is I would try and aim to drop the Fulshamiga Pioneers in a really good location. So for instance, on this map, I would try and like maybe drop them. Normally I would like want to try and find a fuel point with a house or something, maybe on their cutoff. So maybe I might drop it near here so i could capture the fuel and as soon as i've done capturing the fuel i can rush to this house and then get a good like dominant position in the center of the map for instance okay you know you have to build tier one regardless so you get yourself you build yourself your tier one send your first pioneer out capping capping normal territory points you could then go for a kettencrad so you kill this guy in like so you instantly try and get onto a point start capping a point one important thing to know about full shimiga pioneers you do not want to drop them right outside your opponent's base straight uh, straight away because as they're dropping down they become they're quite vulnerable they get like uh, negative cover when they're jumping down any squad that's trying to fight them will get high advantage against them not sure if that's intended at the moment but um you know if they if they jump right on top of like an engineer squad or a sapper squad right at the start they will die and it would be, wouldn't be worth it so be, be, best dropping them somewhere not you know where the enemy can't rush towards straight away with a standard you know, infantry squad, maybe on like a fuel point like this. Cane Crab, right now, you need 35 munitions now to be able to benefit from its uh, communication cables upgrade. So instead of like capturing territory straight outside your base, the Cane Crab, maybe cap a bit further forward and be aggressive and cap. Maybe cap. You probably need to ca capture at least one munitions point straight outside your base so you can actually start getting the munitions to get the upgrade. But once you've got that, try and like maybe be aggressive and cap towards you know your en enemy side of the map because at least on, on your enemy side of the map you're likely to lose the territory anyway later on in the match. So you haven't got to really worry about the inc increased amount of resources if you lose them because you're going to end up losing them probably anyway. So you get that, you get your thing, you know you maybe push ahead and grab that, grab the opponent's uh, fuel. You try and protect it maybe your pioneer squad or send your pioneer squad forward and start capping some more territory. And then once you've got your 35 munitions. Then you start maybe bringing it back and start capturing the you know the immediate sectors outside your base. Like this fuel is right outside your base, you should hardly ever lose it. So you want to try and get your kitten crowd with that upgrade onto that point. Actually, again, it's a bit of experimentation. Maybe get yourself a second pioneer squad uh, out alongside with this build. Pioneers build fairly quickly, actually build very rapidly actually. So you get maybe so two pioneers and then drop. And then by this point, you've got two pioneers, one kitten crowd, then drop in another full shimmer pioneer. Again, maybe on an important fuel point. So you've got two standard pioneers, two full mega pioneers. You could go maybe for yourself for an MG42 um, to help hold territory. But then what I would go is once you've got enough fuel, you'd probably go up to the Luftwaffe company. Let's give ourselves some resources real quick. Next up, once you've got this, you'd probably want to go. Yeah, Jaeger squads are very good right now. You want to go probably get end up getting at least three light uh, light Jaeger squads. It depends on, on, on the situation of the map. If you're up against light vehicles, you, you tend to always need at least one Shrek squad, for sure. And then either it's either two Shrek squads and one, one G43 squad, or two Shrek squads and one G43. So let's go with the def the safe build. Shreks are very good against things like, hum you know, against every armor type, to be honest. But generally, you want at least, like, three Jaegers. One with G43s, you know, because that makes it good against anti-infantry. They've got access to smoke grenade and recon flare. Standard Jaegers with the with the Shreks also have the smoke grenade. Having them with the G43 the flare is just very important to give yourself vision on the map. Even with the Shrek upgrade, the Jaegers are still fairly decent against infantry. Uh, not as good as, as, you know, if they would have had the G43 upgrade, but they're still pretty good. So you end up having Jaegers. Probably want to go for the Luftwaffe officer quarters as well to give them vet one, increase their veteracy gain rate as well. And then once you've done that, maybe going into tier four, and then straight into Panzer IV production. Now, you could technically go straight from Tier 1 into Tier 4. But I feel like, you know, you kind of need the Jaegers. If you, you can't really survive with just pure Grens. Grens, the Grens right now are quite weak. They're quite squishy. They don't seem to... They're probably one of the worst mainline infantry in the match right now. The standard Grens. I would have loved to be able to skip Tier 1 if possible. And just go straight to Tier, tier 2 into Tier 4. But then once I get my first Panzer IV out, I would then go for the side skirts to make it, you know, give it better armor. Probably a second Panzer IV, and then go for the Panzer Officer Corps to, you know. Also try and, if I've got munitions, go for the, uh, the Pintle Mount Machine Gun. There we go. So, yeah, this is, you know, generally, this is probably what I would try and go for as, like, my core infantry army. Later on, you know, if you've still got population cap spare, uh, and you haven't got the fuel, 
Like, again, if you're up against more armor, maybe make yourself another Jaeger squad with Shreks. If you if you want something to deal with, you know, you're up against a lot of elite infantry, maybe you can then para, para drop in yourself the full Shmiga squad later on. But one main, if you're going for the Luftwaffe build, one thing you really want to get for is infantry reserves. Let me just give myself some more command points here. Then, yeah, you'd go for this. Like, now that Luftwaffe combat group, it comes at four CPs. It comes a little bit late now. Um, and the Whirlwind is pretty decent, but, like, you know... Panzer fours will be able to defend themselves against armor. The Wobble Wind wouldn't, uh, can't really do that. Probably better off going for infantry reserves now because it reduces the reinforcement cost of all infantry units by and, and infantry based team weapons by 25%. So it makes everything a lot cheaper to reinforce, especially if you go for something like Jaegers, who are quite expensive to reinforce as standard. So you go for that. Then late game, you can either power drip yourself a Lacroix rifle. This, I think, this needs to be actually recruited. It costs you just, I think, 75 munitions. You can go for the Flak 36. Maybe in team games, this might be something you might want to go for. Maybe even even a 1v1 if you can maybe get away with it. 380 manpower, 45 uh, fuel. But yeah, you need you know, pop, you pop it down. I don't know, maybe in a really good location. Maybe on a map like this, you probably want it kind of centered. Something I like here, if possible. Once you've probably gotten rid of this tree line here, because you want to make sure it's got a good vision. And then here, you'd be able to defend them. You know, the middle VP point, which is probably here. Uh, you'll be able to defend this fuel. You almost go touch your opponent's cut off. Maybe in a nice centric, or even like maybe... For instance, um, maybe in this little area over here, a lot, of, a lot of zone control. Don't want to build it too far away from your base because you wouldn't want to be able to get to it to be able to reinforce it. But with this gun, it has to you have to manually like turn and face it, I believe, so you can shoot at certain angles. During your build, you might want to throw one of these down right outside, right outside your opponent's base, for instance, if you can get away with that, and you and you you, you might be able to reinforce and get a field presence around it. You know, if you can go for the cutoff, that would be quite painful. So you could go for that potentially. They do have access to the Luftwaffe Rally Point, but it's quite expensive. 200, man, 200 manpower for just being able to reinforce. I don't know if it's really worth it. It doesn't actually act, uh, you know, OP the point in, in the sense that it gives more resources either, as you'll see. Like so. No extra resources. Just be, I mean, the opponent's still got to destroy it before they can cap it. But yeah, I'm not sure if that's really worth it at the moment. You can also, I'd probably go for the, um, the grenade launcher upgrade on these guys. Because it's good against you know entrenched units and things like that. They don't have the ability to lob the um, the smoke grenade like the Panzer Pioneers do, uh, do with with their uh, grenade launcher, but they do have also a satchel charge uh, as standard with the uh, with the Fulcrum Pioneers, which is quite nice as well. And uh, when they vet one, the squad will heal when out of combat and capture territory faster, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, you guys, I believe once they get vet one, they also can camouflage, as you can see here. So you might be able to you know put them on hold fire. You can maybe do an ambush or something like that, which is quite nice. This is probably it, I think, you know, later on. Yeah, again, you just want to keep churning out Panzer IVs. If your opponent's camping with a lot of units and being really defensive, maybe you want to throw yourself out of mortar. mortar the mortar, once it gets vet one, you can start popping flares out so you can get yourself more vision. So if, you need, if you're lacking vision, you can do flares with the mortar once it gets vet one. At the Jaeger squad, they can do the, the recon flare without the vet one. They just need the, the G43s. Maybe you might want to go for the last tech over here. If, if your opponent's being really entrenched and uh, you'll probably want to go maybe get the support element upgrade and then go for the Nebelwerfer. This would be a good unit to get to, you know, get rid of someone who's being really campy and like got lots of support weapons and stuff. This would be a, would be a nice unit to build, bring out. And actually, this um, pretty much, you bring up to about this point here, probably able to bombard your opponent's base actually. It's not actually far away from the base. You've already noticed that I've not chosen the pack gun again. Pack guns, again, it's just again, tanky tank guns across the board are just way too slow to turn, sit up, and move around. They're very vulnerable right now. They're nowhere near as good as they were in like, something like Company Heroes 2. So I would probably you know, avoid going anti-tank guns uh, if at all possible in Company Heroes 3. The exceptions to this are stuff like, I guess, the Flak, 8, the Flak 36, the 17-pounder, which can turn very quickly or, the, or has 360-degree uh, uh, traversal. This has got 360 traversal if you if you face it correctly, and the Flak 88 from the DAC, you know, that just turns 360 on on itself anyway. Instead of maybe going for the MG42, you could go for the Flak 30 anti anti aircraft team. This is very good against infantry, uh, okay against shooting planes down, but it has a very long setup time compared to something like an MG42. So you could you know maybe want to go you can go for something like that. Brumbar and Stostrupen. I don't feel like the Stostrupen and the Brumbar are worth it right now. They're both very expensive. Stostrupen, 420 manpower. They're very squishy as a, a four-man squad. I'd rather probably just get a Vet Jaeger squad out with G43s. They've got a bit more, you know, with the flare, they've just got a bit better utility. And the Brumbar isn't, you know, it's nowhere near as good as, like, the old, the other, co the company here is too, Brumbar. It's got, the range on the Brumbar is really bad right now. 
So this, you know, however, this is all subject to change. You know, the balance isn't set in stone. It will change in the future. The, probably the Brumbar will get buffed and, you know, there'll be a new build that I'll bring down the line where the Brumbar's going to be worth getting. But right now, it's just not worth it. Same thing like we'd like the 221. Pretty shit right now. Especially its, it's AT rifle upgrade is pretty, pretty garbage. The assault Panzer Grenadiers, they're pretty good close quarters combat. But it, they have got access to the bundle grenade, so better than just a standard frag stick grenade. Increased speed makes them harder to hit when they get bit once they can sprint around a little bit. They do come with STGs, so pretty good. But they have got no way to deal with, uh, against enemy armor. Or at least the Panzer, Ye uh, Panzer Jäger score, when you get them out, you can then tech them either way you want to go. You can give them a Shrek to deal with armor or maybe G43s, and then they can drop flares. Whereas these guys just haven't really got enough utility for, for my liking. And maybe if they had a flare or if they had a smoke grenade or something with, alongside them, then they would probably be more, more, more worth it. But right now, they just have the bundle grenade. Your further tech with this commander choice left buffer, probably go for the strafing run, maybe. Won't really need the reconnaissance run if you've got yourself that Jaeger squad with the G43s, as you saw earlier, it has the flare. Full Shemega power drop. 360 manpower, cheaper than the, the Stoss Street at 4, 420. I'll just, uh, you can, and also, obviously, you can power drop them in. Let me just spawn them in. These guys are probably better than the, more utility than the Stoss Street because these guys actually have the ability to Panzerfaust. So you'll have a bit of, you know, bit of AT capability there. Um, they also can camouflage, which is very nice. So you can set up ambushes with them. And they also have got a standard stick grenade as well. And they also will heal out of combat and capture territory faster. So yeah, cheaper than these Soul Street, but they more utility. So, and all of their guys, all of these guys have uh, FG42s on them. Whereas the Soul Street and Squab only have that one MG42, I believe. They do have the stick grenade assault, which is where they all lob grenades. Which is quite nice, but again, against good players, I'll probably dodge it. But what the red phosphorus grenade is quite nice. I mean, that's like a you know, it blinds line of sight, it, you know, hides line of sight, and it also uh, damages over time. But again, I just feel like you know, too squishy. If they were maybe five men, maybe it might be worth it, but. Yeah, the, the full shimmy because with, with the fact that they can panzer fast and camo where these guys can't i just think these guys are a lot better and yeah they're cheaper as well and the, you know they can you can power drop them anywhere maybe behind enemy lines to catch a retreating squad or something like that could be handy as well and then lastly the stuka loiter you pretty much always want to go for the stuka loiter over the fragmentation bombs because i feel like the fragmentation bombs unlike in code 2 these things were amazing right absolutely amazing but these right now i think in code 3 they take a long time to come down so it's easy to dodge whereas the stuka loiter even though it's more cps requirement very good against smashing that enemy armor so it's like you know if you're attacking and you want that extra firepower you can call that in to help you win a, win a fight or if you're getting dived in with a lot of armor you can drop this on over here and these and planes would come in and, and and save you for instance so let's say against lots of sherman tanks you know these planes will come in and uh, maybe, you know, massively help you out. Just see when they're all clumped up like this. Yeah. There you go. Very, very strong. Very, you know, very good, like, offensive and a defensive ability to, to use, potentially. So, there you guys go. That is the Luftwaffe build order that you may want to use in Company Heroes 3. So guys, that's the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and want more content, check up over here and over here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the button down here. Um, catch you in the next video, guys. Take care. And I'll see you soon.